Hi guys, how are you? I've missed you. I hope you have a good week and a good 4th of July. I want to make sure before we get started, you all have your workbooks. That way your hands can be busy when your ears are busy and your eyes are busy. So today I want you to turn to the page of July 5th in your book. And let's look at first our Bible verse is from Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. We're going to read today. Again, we're going to start out from Paul writes a letter. Here's, here's today's letter from Paul. You see him sitting there with his bird, writing his letter. Here's his pictures over here. What Paul says today is, Dear friends in Galatia, only remember one thing. Love others just the way you love yourselves. And guys, we've talked about that already. That's the golden rule, isn't it? Love others the way you love yourself. And then the next thing Paul tells his friends is he says, you reap what you sow. If you begin something out of badness, badness will grow. If you begin something out of goodness, goodness will grow. Please don't bother me if you don't like this letter, Paul. So I want to talk about this part right up here. You reap what you sow. And that's kind of the message or the lesson that we're looking at today. Let us not grow weary in doing good. So we've spent a lot of time talking about what it means to be the church and how we can be the church. Um, and we've talked about practicing kindness and doing good acts and following the golden rule. And you guys, that's hard to do. It's hard to be a good Christian and choose to do good and choose to do right. And I think that's what, what this Galatians verse that we're looking at today is talking about, is Paul knows that it's hard. It's hard to be a Christian. You know, it's easier to lose your patience um, at your mom or dad or grandma when they're wanting you to do things rather than, you know, just play or watch TV or whatever. That's way more fun than doing chores or working on a summer workbook or even doing Sunday school. Um, or like when you're playing with your brothers and sisters and cousins, sometimes it's, it's hard to be kind, isn't it? And not lose your temper or sometimes it's hard to share your toys or have to play. Um, and do something that somebody else wants to do instead of you. And Paul knows that. He says, don't, don't grow weary, don't be tired in doing good. And then that goes into our next verse, that you reap what you sow. And guys, that's a farming term. What that means is, if you plant something, how you, how you treat it will, will be how it ends up. So like, let's say, you know, you plant a seed or you plant a plant. If after you plant it, you don't do anything to take care of it, you don't put any effort into it, like you don't water it, you don't make sure that the weeds don't overgrow it, you don't make sure it gets enough sun, it's not gonna grow very well. It's, it's, probably, gonna, it's probably gonna die or not grow well. But you know, if you check on it every day and you put effort into it every day, you know, you water it, you make sure the weeds don't take it over, it's going to grow big and strong and healthy. And this is the same thing about you being a Christian. Um, if you put a little effort into it every day, you're going to do great. So put effort into being a Christian, into following the golden rule. Um, do your workbooks, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. My name is Becky Samaniego, and I'm a member of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church and I am reading Drawing God by Karen Kiefer, illustrations by Kathy DeWitt. Last Monday, after a field trip to the art museum, I was inspired to draw like Picasso. This urge to draw something beyond spectacular followed me home, 
and would not leave my side. What should I draw? I thought. I sat quietly, listening to my mind and my heart. That's when I heard their whisper, and I decided to draw God. Grabbing a yellow crayon, I drew the brightest sun. It was so dazzling and radiant, my cheeks throbbed. Its rays were so long, they poked at my heart. Staring at the drawing, I knew I had drawn God. The next day, I took my drawing to school and showed my best friend, Peter. Look, I drew God. Peter looked at me and chirped, Emma, that's not God, that's the sun. At first, I wanted to argue with Peter because I knew it was God. God is light. But instead, I decided to go home and draw God again. This time, I grabbed a brown brown crayon and drew a loaf of bread. It was the bread my mother bakes that makes me feel warm and tingly inside when I eat it. My mother says that bread reminds her of God's grace. I looked at the drawing. It made me feel warm and tingly inside. I knew I had drawn God. I took my picture to school. At lunchtime, I showed my almost best friend, Rose. Look, I drew God, I said. She looked at the picture, and then she looked at me and said, Emma, that's not God. That's a loaf of bread. Again, I wanted to argue. Rose, this is God, I thought. God is bread. But instead, I decided to go home and draw God again. That night, I sat down and asked God for help. Please, God, help me draw you, I pleaded. I stared at a blank piece of paper for a while and then grabbed a red crayon. I drew a gigantic heart and colored it in so hard my crayon disappeared. When it was done, it was the reddest, most beautiful heart I'd ever seen. My heart was thump, thump, thumping. I knew absolutely positively I had drawn God. Even Picasso would agree. At lunch, Peter and Rose found me. They asked if I had drawn any more pictures of God. From my backpack, I pulled out a folded piece of paper and said, here's another one. Peter opened the paper and squawked. This is a drawing of a heart, not God. Rose chimed in, Emma, God is not a valentine. This time, I wanted to jump up and down and scream, God is love! Instead, I took the drawing back and tucked it away. As I walked home from school, everything felt heavy. That night, I didn't feel like Picasso. Kneeling next to my bed, I asked God for some more help. God, please help me draw you so that my friends can see you. By Friday, it seemed as if everyone in the school knew about my God drawings. Everyone was looking at me. I was waiting for them to point and laugh. But for the first time, I didn't care what anyone thought about my drawings. I felt a comfort that would not leave my side. I knew that I had drawn God. God knew I had drawn God. And maybe Picasso knew too. Finally, that felt like enough. But on the following Monday, something beyond spectacular happened. Everyone at school was drawing God. And every picture was different.